Now this is a nice bit of kit that uh, come through the post the other day. Uh, it was delivered uh, free from Wilderness Leisure. I think it was an amazing purchase really. It is a 1970s British Army night vision sight which would have once belonged to a re recoilless gun or something because um, this uh, houses the image intensifier in there and uh, on the front is a massive lens which I'm about to show you. It, it comes in this fitted case which uh, has a lot of pen marks on there. RHG stands for Royal Horse Guards and uh, probably the D stands for Dragoons and um, I was amazed that uh, Wilderness Leisure was able to post this free as charge because it actually weighs about £40 plus uh, amazing. It was obviously been refurbished in recent years because it's in excellent condition. Yeah, you can actually have a look there. The bit that houses the image intensifier. Uh, I fitted a polymer ring there to enable ease of focusing because I'm actually intending to use this. Uh, the eyepiece and the adjustment is rather beautiful. Beautifully made bit of kit. And um, as you can see there, you've got a few knobs. These are the uh, shutters. It's got a twin shutter arrangement which enables you to shut out the sky or the ground if there's any bright lights because the, the three-stage image intensifier tube would be blinded by any extraneous light because believe me, this, uh, this guzzles the light this baby does. Uh, you've got like a click-stop arrangements on there for your uh, attachments and uh, on the front You have a massive lens. All right, Terry. As you can see, you can put your head in there. Uh, there's a mirror lens, catadioptric, optic, uh, about eight or nine inches wide, and is in perfect condition because it's been in storage for some years. Uh, this guzzles the light. As you can say, you can stick your head in there quite comfortably. Uh, on a starlit night, it would enable you to see about two and a half thousand yards. Uh, but these days you'd use something like this for astronomy because, as you can see, the baffles on the front there enable any stray light to be soaked up by the... before it actually reaches the lens there, otherwise you'd get like a lot of scattered light. I think these were first used in Vietnam back in 1969. As you can see, it's got coated optics. Brilliant bit of kit, really. Uh, as I say, the image intensifier was burned out on him, uh, which enabled uh, Wilderness Leisure to sell him for, I think it was a bargain price, because the optics on it are pretty well perfect, as you can see. <clears throat> I'll just give you a... As I say, there's the focusing ring. The eyepiece is uh, <clears throat> really smooth, excellent condition, and the original clip-on uh, rubber eyepiece surround. And that will there enables you to adjust the brightness of the image intensifier. So you could use it on a on a on a cloudy day at a stretch, because obviously because it's a gun sight, obviously you would have to use it. You couldn't just restrict it to just pitch darkness. <clears throat> this is a nice little feature. On the back, on the on the on here comes a little spanner. You get like it comes with the device. You get like a Turn that, and inside there there's a little capsule for your silica gel, which I think is rather neat. That's probably why the optics have stayed for the last 30 years in such good condition. And, and inside those you put these little cartridges, which are silica gel cartridges. <clears throat> I think it's rather brilliant. As you can see on the, on the top there it says, do not switch on by daylight, otherwise it will destroy the three-stage tube inside. And on the top there, you've got an infinity mark. As I say, I think it's been refurbished in recent times because it doesn't seem to have much marks on there. So you'd have thought the old Scottish would have bashed, Scottish would have bashed him about a bit. On the top of the device is the the windage adjustments. So for a penny coin, you can actually there's your your height, and then on the windage is on the other side. Just there, look. You just adjust it simply with that 
in the field. Amazing bird kit. As I say, I'll put a new tube in there and rewired it up so that it can be used. So we'll give you a little bit of a demonstration later. Look at that look. That really guzzles the light. That will take, uh, that will gather five times the light of a normal rifle scope image intensifier. So it would enable you to see a mile in uh, starlight conditions and uh, hopefully we'll be able to demonstrate this later for you. As I say, sometimes on the uh, internet you can get these bargains. It, it is very heavy. Obviously it's not something you can uh, you can't cart around too far without uh, like a golf trolley or something but uh, believe me when you get it out into the field this bit of kit here it's amazing probably about 30 40 years old I'm just amazed that even on the internet you can get these bargains but if you're prepared to retube these and they are uh, the P7980 HP is available on the internet as I say, it's a three-stage tube, which uh, you just take a few screws out the back here and you can, say for a little bit of rewiring work, you can get it all going. Say so the the knobs on there, really beautiful clip stock arrangement. I won't do that one because that'll switch on the intensifier unit. And uh, you don't really want to do that in daylight, even though you have the shutter arrangement. So we'll give it a bit of a demo. Hope you enjoyed it. It really is, you know, for its years it works really well. Any any ID would be welcome. Because I haven't got a clue basically what uh, it originally come from, but I think it was probably from a recoilless rifle back in the 70s. So <clears throat> Could have been used in the Falklands. Uh, as I say, the, the markings on the box there for Royal Horse Guards possibly with Dragoons. I think they were integrated uh, uh, together in the 70s, so I think this is probably, is probably a late 70s unit, so uh, brilliant. we get out in the field and we'll have a little bit of a double. Thank you. You can't really see much because it's so damn dark, but uh, you say he's facing out into this field. We've got some cattle out here and we've got a farm building about 150 metres away, so we're going to we're going to switch him on, focus him up, and uh, demonstrate the uh, what this beast can do. If you just bear with me. It is absolutely pitch dark. We've got a little bit of a starlight out here. And that you can see that large, that large lens is actually managing to gather a really bright image of the Pleiades, which is known as the Seven Sisters. <laughs> it's a bit of experimental at the moment, because it's a bit difficult to film anything, uh, sort of like a bit... I could have done with an extra pair of hands really, but you see it's pretty, um, pretty fantastic view there. We'll have a look when we get it back and see if it's any good. As I say, you know, I've only been out a couple of times with it, so I'm going to experiment with the iPod and uh, see if I can match the camera up to the eyepiece a bit better. I think you can see through the eyepiece at the moment. I've got that farmhouse about. 150 yards away. Uh, tr I've tried to block the light out a bit. There's a, they've got obviously a 100 watt light bulb burning in the kitchen because it's blotting out the image. But I just want to demonstrate the uh, the verbal diode gun sight for you. Uh, I'm switching them up now. Look, you can just see at the bottom there. You got like a bit of a faint trace. Let's turn them up a bit more. There he is. Look. If I just have to get a little bit nearer to the scope, so you can actually see it pretty clearly there. Uh, although I'm on a bit of an angle, can't really help that too much. It's just, uh, it just feels got a bit of a slope on, but um, it can turn them up, increase the brightness. So on a gloomy day or a bright day, vary the brightness. But if you go too far, you will wash the image out. <laughs> see the screens on the bottom. You can. That's the bottom screen and there's the top screen so if you had a too much brightness you could cut it out but so if there was a tank down the bottom there you'd probably see him and then of course bring him back up and you so the, it does wash the image out so if I pull him over a little bit there you go you'll see 
the image intensifier actually works a little bit better without that um, uh, probably a 60 watt light bulb burning about 150 yards away it does cause a bit of under overexposure on the tube so fantastic bit of kit I hope you agree you know guys we're on starlit conditions now got uh, looks like we got a fair bit of a uh, bit of cattle in the distance there Gun sight, gun sight's working superbly. As you can see, you can switch it on and off, uh, make it lighter or darker. But can a bit of overkill there. But there you go, brilliant bit of kit. Turn them off, and you can see the cattle very clearly in the field there, grazing away. They're making their way over to me, so I'll probably clear off in a minute because I don't want to disturb them. You can see, you can even see that one of them got spots on, you know, in starlight conditions, that's bloody amazing.